Hey, what's up guys, it's Nick2. Today I'm gonna to show you guys what is by far and away my favorite build in Diablo 4, and that is a speedrunning variant of the Crushing Hand Spiritborn build. This build can do pit 100s super easily in like under a minute, still hitting for trillions, just flying through the game faster than pretty much anything else can, one tapping everything, it feels incredibly good to play, just very responsive, very reminiscent of D3 Monk crazy amount of fun and for most intents and purposes i'd say it is just better than quill volley because it is more efficient damage wise it is much worse than quill volley but that doesn't matter when you're hitting for trillions right unless you're trying to do very high tiers of the pit i'll have a very detailed crushing hand build video out soon this is just going to be a showcase of the speed farming variant that i have however there are very detailed written guides down below both a starter version and end game version that I have on, an all around version, and also a pit pushing like very high damage variant. So feel free to refer to those. But today I just wanted to quickly show you guys what I've been having a lot of fun with and to just go over the speed farming variation of the build. In light of it being a speed farming sort of build, I'm gonna try to speed run the video as well. So if you like the video being more short and sweet, please let me know down in the comments rather than it being like a super in-depth detailed guide, let me know. If you want all the nitty gritty information, just refer to the written build links and I'll have a more in-depth guide like I usually do in a few days. Let's get into it. I bet a lot of you guys are playing Quill Volley right now, so you're wondering what the difference between Crushing Hand and Quill Volley is. The main difference is Crushing Hand just feels really nice and it by default has AoE, so it just is much better for general clearing, whereas Quill Volley kind of relies on Vortex for the clearing. The main difference in terms of how you want to set up the build, you could wear the Quill Volley build and immediately swap to Crushing Hand. The only difference is Crushing Hand does not have Vulnerable on it by default, so you need to solve that. You can solve that by using Vulnerable with Soar. You can use the Exploit Glyph in the Paragon board to immediately apply Vulnerable. And then you can use, I don't have it on, but the Affix uh, Lucky Hit chance to apply Vulnerable on your ring. Boom, that's then solved. Then you just want to have one crushing hand size temper on your gear and swap out one roll of um, whatever your core skill rank is on your glove to crushing hand ranks. Boom. Now you have a crushing hand build on. That's literally the only difference you really need to know about. Just like Quill Volley, this build is using Capelike paired with the Banner Sword Talisman so that we gain a whole bunch of extra damage based on our maximum vigor. And then every one of our casts is going to be a guaranteed overpower because of Banner Sword's Talisman. You need at least 245 vigor with uh, Crushing Hand in order to have the guaranteed overpowers every single attack. And then you want a Ring of the Midnight Sun, like always, with at least 47% roll on it, paired with some vigor generation that we have in the skill tree, etc. Then you get um, every single time that you attack, your vigor bar will look like this. And every one of your attacks is a guaranteed uh, overpower. Then you scale up your HP like crazy, which is very easy to do via your gear. And then that is going to scale up the damage that you get from Visca Shield, which gives you increased damage per point of HP that you have that counts as a barrier, which means we want 100% barrier and then as much HP as possible because that gives you extra damage. It's 1% of damage per 12 points of HP. If you get um, the Quay Rune paired with the Crushing Hand, you only need 50% barrier generation because Crushing Hand gives you 30% barrier and then the Quay Rune gives you 45%. So it's a 75% barrier just on the face of it. So you get 50% barrier bonus. That'll give you a 100% barrier when you attack, which you can easily get by just tempering barrier gen on your gear on one piece and then using one Amethyst. That's 50% barrier gen plus what you have in the Paragon board. Outside of that, we use Aspect of Interdiction paired with Aspect of Redirected Force to give us a lot of extra block chance, which then scales our crit damage multiplier, giving us just a lot of extra damage based on our block. And then we use Aspect of Moonrise for extra damage too. For our skills, we use Soar for a lot of movement and also the vulnerable. And there's also some tech I can show you guys where you can basically infinitely Soar. I'll talk about that later with some gameplay. Then we use Armored Hide for extra block chance and also just, just the extra block chance and maximum resolve sacks every time we press it. The block chance scales into crit damage. We use the Hunter for a lot of damage multipliers. We use Ravager for vigor generation. And then we use Vortex for quality of life. You could swap out either Vortex or Soar for Scourge if you want more damage. But for the purposes of speed farming, it is not really helpful. And uh, Scour Soar and Vortex are both very nice quality of life. Uh, when it comes to the skill tree, I have Shroud of Falls Death on right now. Just refer to the build links. Nothing really crazy in here that you need to know about. A lot of stuff is just going to straight up increase your damage. Keep in mind that more points into Armored Hide or the Hunter basically just equals uh, more cooldown reduction for them. The reason that I have points specced into Intricacy is related to the Soar and Vortex tech, which will be timestamped, so feel free to just go to there. 
that is more quality of life sort of speed running stuff. Otherwise, everything is just damaged, so don't worry about it, just refer to the build link. When it comes to our gear, we want to have a normal legendary helmet and use the aspect of Binding Morass. This just gives you increased damage to slowed enemies and it immediately applies crowd control, so you instantly get 20% increased damage and it also, since it applies crowd control, instantly gives you access to the revealing node, giving you 30% increased damage. So that's a very good aspect. And then on the helmet, you want max HP, max resource, either dex, armor, or res uh, resistances. And then you want to temper on maximum resolve stacks. And you want all of the masterworks to land on the resolve stacks because resolve stacks gives you more block chance, which then scales redirected force. And it also increases the damage that you do with Crushing Hand via this node here. On your chest, you want to have Shroud of False Death if possible because the all stats is very good for Paragon board. Max HP is crazy for scaling your barrier. And then the plus one to all passives is a lot of damage. There's just damage, 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 damage. Uh, Shroud of False Death is probably about 40% better than a normal chest. But if you don't have it, it's okay. Using a normal chest is fine too. And you probably want it to be about the same as your helmet dex max hp resist stuff like that and then maximum resolve stacks or uh, resilient talk about resilient in a sec on your gloves you want max hp ranks of crushing hand and then you want uh, attack speed ideally instead of resource cost reduction and you want all of the masterworks to land on either max hp or ranks of crushing hand and then temper on overpower damage and temper on crushing hand size pants you want max hp dex basic skills and instead of dex again you could have armor or resistances and then we have um, plus five to resilient you want to have one piece with resilient on it and then one piece with resolve stacks if you don't have a shroud of false death then you want um, two pieces with resilient resilient gives you increased hp via this node here which scales our barrier a lot so it ends up being more damage but you still want at least one piece of resolve stacks and then on my boots, these are my speedrunning boots. I like to have a greater affix movement speed, so I'm just movement speed capped all the time. Max HP and then armor, and then uh, movement speed or vortex size. If you don't have Shroud of Falls Death, I would recommend using Yen's Blessing, and this will be in the planner, because this gives you all stats for your Paragon board breakpoints, it gives you resistance to all elements, which makes it very easy to reach res cap, and it gives you resource generation, which is nice as well, so that you always, so that you don't have to worry about like your resource gen with the Ring of the Midnight Sun. You lose a utility temper, uh, that ends up being fine though. And I had the duelist aspect on here for increased attack speed, which basically gives you increased damage. You could use ghost walker aspect for more movement speed, but it is not necessary because you reach movement speed cap if you have a greater affix movement speed on here. When it comes to your tempers, you only need one barrier generation temper paired with one amethyst, and then you can use all the rest into dexterity and that'll get you 50% barrier generation. I don't have, um, I have, I'm over capped on barrier generation tempers and I can't fix it, so that's why I have dex gems in. And then you want to have one or two crushing hand sizes. I only have one, I only think you need one, you could do two if you prefer. And then I have one vortex size, because vortex having a larger size is pretty nice. On your capelike, you want the greater affix to be transfer core skills to hit twice and ideally hit the masterwork crits there and then maximum resource. On your other ring, you want to have max HP, attack speed, and then lucky hit chance to apply vulnerable. And then temper on resource cost reduction if you have at least 560 intelligence and a 50% ring. Otherwise, temper on resource generation. Then temper overpower damage, and again, put moonrise. On Ring of the Midnight Sun, try to get at least a 47% roll. And then if you can, greater affix dex, and then masterwork the dex. On your banished lords, you want greater affix max HP, most important, and then core skills. And try to get all the masterworks into the HP, and the bottom percent isn't a huge deal. When it comes to resistances and your armor, you only need a thousand armor. Just keep in mind that anywhere that there is dexterity or armor, you could just swap out to resistance. And if you really want to be res capped, Yen's Blessing is a super easy way to do that. There's also incenses that give you plus 10% maximum res and armor, and also armor via Song of the Mountain. We use the Rahir Mercenary, which gives us 15% extra armor, and it gives us Fortify, which gives us extra damage via overpowering. So you can use this extra armor to get you armor capped as well. I just use an incense and I run around with no resistances and I never die, but that's because I have like 40,000 HP. Paragon board will be down in the description and it is always updated. I have Headhunter Glyph because I like to slam a lot of decks in here. I have Spirit Glyph for more damage and crit damage. I have Colossal Glyph for extra damage per resolve stack. And then we have the Menagerist Glyph. People ask Menagerist versus Hubris. My cat is freaking out. People ask for a Menagerist versus Hubris. Uh, they're like within a percent of each other. Don't worry about it. And then I have Exploit Glyph here, so that we instantly apply Vulnerable, and we have the Drive node rather than having Convergence. Um, 
people ask me not to speed run the Paragon board, but that's what the build link is for. Please just refer to the build link. Thank you very much. Um, when it comes to actually playing with the build and the difference between the speedrun version and a normal version, with the speedrun version, I like to use the teleport rune, and you pair this with um, Zol and Jaw, and then you use Quay and Pock on your other rune. So anytime you proc your barrier, you basically gain access to teleport, which is nice just for speed farming. Otherwise, um, you lose a significant amount of damage to do this, but I don't need the damage. But you're losing 20% HP, if I can find it. There, you're losing the Zal rune for 20% HP, which is a lot of damage via Viscous Shield, but I just like having the teleport. But you don't really need the teleport, it is just nice to have. One thing that is very nice to note, and I'll show it in gameplay in a sec, is uh, this Soar tech, which you can also take advantage of with Vortex. Because of this intricacy node in the skill tree down here, Anytime that you use an ultimate skill, you can use any skill that you use prior to it multiple times and it'll instantly have no cooldown. And if you have points into this, you can basically soar like five times in a row. So I'll show you this real quick. So if I press soar, it's on a cooldown, right? But then if I use the hunter, now I can soar again, and I can soar again, and I can soar again, and I can soar again. And usually you won't need to soar 20 times in a row. So in between that, you'll be attacking a little bit. So in between that, you'll get your teleport and then you'll get hunter again. And you can just basically have infinite mobility as a result of taking advantage of that. You can do the same thing with um, Vortex, which I'll display real quick. That is a reason that using Harlequin Crest can be very nice for a speed farming variation of the build because you can have 50% cooldown reduction. So your Vortex goes down to a five second cooldown. Your hunter's a 15 second cooldown. Like it's crazy good for speed farming, but you do lose quite a significant amount of damage which is why i don't have it in the build but it's not like a ton of damage because harlequin still has hp on it and max resource and the cooldown reduction is pretty nice so i might have this in the speed farming variant not 100 percent sure yet in most of my gameplay i was not using that so i think i do it here which is pretty nice so i'll just show you guys kind of this whole clip this is also just gameplay but like if i had a lower cooldown and higher temper on vortex size this would also be very nice but what you can do is you can just press your ultimate skill you can press vortex first and then press the hunter and then you can just spam Vortex over and over and over, which is really, really nice for Infernal Hordes, or if you're just like, I don't know, I guess Nightmare Dungeons would be pretty nice. I mean, Soar is kind of nicer to do this with because you can just fly around, right? But I think I got a nice little clip where I just spammed it back to back to back, which felt just really, really good to do, especially <laughs> when you're doing this. This build is infinitely better than Quill Volley for pretty much everything that you want to do. It just feels so nice because everything is one tapped. Like, you don't need Quill Volley's damage. It would, it's way better to just spam Vortex and just one-shot everything with Crushing Hand, right? So here I think I'm about to do it where I press Soar, and then I, sorry, I press Vortex, and then I press my ult, and then I just whoop, mob spawn, whoop, mob spawn, whoop, mob spawn, whoop, and it is a lot of fun to do that. Quickly, I'll show you guys gameplay of me doing a Pit 101, I think it was. Did it in like a minute or so, and just show you how you want to play with the build. Very similar to Quill Volley. Um, what I like to do is engage with Soar and then use Hunter after, so if I want to, I can spam Soar multiple times. And then I just use Armored Hide on cooldown and Ravager on cooldown because you want to have their buffs up all the time. Otherwise, uh, Vortex, just whenever you feel like it. The cooldown's really low, so it's not a big deal. You can kind of use it whenever you want. Right there, I kind of griefed and <laughs> soared into the wall. Um, otherwise, I like to just teleport whenever I feel like it. I mean, the build is like crazy fluid to play. I messed up. I shouldn't have even backtracked here. I did this so unbelievably fast and like it could be even faster if I didn't play like a noob. And I think this was before I did some optimizations and I don't have my incenses on either. So the damage could also be a little bit better, but I just had this nice little section at the end where I soared like four times in a row. And I think that's a good representation of why it's nice to use the intricacy thing, but you can just slam your buttons however you want and play with it perfectly fine. That's just a nice little tip that I recommend. Like, as you can see there, I got a double soar off and it just helps with the movement, right? Pair that with a teleport and Hunter giving you movement. You can literally just zoom around. As you can see here, like there's pretty much no downtime of me fighting mobs because anytime in between a pack, I can Hunter, teleport, soar, 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 Hunter, soar, like, like I did right there. And then walk up to the boss, boss accidentally press soar twice. And then the boss kind of just instantly dies too. That's pretty much it for the video. I'm gonna do an FAQ of Spiritborn tomorrow, so if you have any questions, feel free to leave it down below. If you like the quicker video, let me know down in the comments. Uh, thanks for watching, drop a like if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys later, peace.